So I call it back to basics because I really believe, and this comes from mom, that it's not that complicated. We just have to have the will to do it. It's not a bunch of standardized testing. It's not a bunch of gimmicks like vouchers. It is doing two things. I call it two things. You could call it ten things, but I've encapsulated it into two things. And one is to expand opportunity. And we know that if you get kids into school early, for me, where we're at in South Carolina, that means full day, four-year-old kindergarten across South Carolina, then you have a better chance for them to succeed long term. And so my goal, and I've worked on this for the last two years, and as governor, I want to bring it to the full fruition, is to have full four-year-old universal kindergarten in South Carolina, just like I have had in Georgia for like 20 years, uh, and have in North Carolina. And then also begin to reach even earlier than that as we engage with parents and help with other early childhood uh, initiatives that we know can pay dividends long term. And so that's expanding opportunity for these kids. And then number two is empowering teachers, which is always good to talk to teachers and say empowering teachers, but that's what it is. And what does that mean to me? Well, it means, number one, um, that we, and I'm going to use the words of some of the other teachers that I've talked to over the last couple of weeks, number one, we treat teachers uh, as professionals and show them respect. And those are words I've heard from teachers over the last few weeks as we've done this. Um, and to me, that means we need to pay our teachers better. You know, we are in South Carolina, one of the um, lowest ranked states in America for paying teachers. And I know you do it because you love it, but I also know that we show our respect uh, and we retain high quality teachers and attract high quality teachers to the classroom if we pay decent wages. And right now we're behind North Carolina, we're behind Georgia, we are one of the lowest in America. And my goal is to increase us initially to the southeastern average and then work toward the national average. You know, people say, can you do it? And I say, I mean, we're just talking about average. At least we can do <laughs> average, right? I'd like to say we're the best paying state in America. Um, don't let's fight about even trying to get to average. But that's number one. Number two is shrinking class sizes in South Carolina's public schools. And I've always thought this is important, but it really came home to me about a month or two ago. I was in Walmart, uh, and I was shopping, and a teacher pulled me over, and she said, that's it. I said, yeah. And she said, listen. I like good technology and it's important to have technology in the classroom, but I don't need any more flat screen TVs in our school. I need smaller class sizes so that I can teach these kids. Yes. And it just said to me, you know, if everybody could hear that, the way you said that, um, and the reality of that. And so smaller class sizes helps to empower teachers, it allows you to spend more time with kids and to really focus on them. I know with our children it certainly has been helpful um, as well when we have that. Um, you're going to see there's a variety of other things I talk about in here and I encourage you to take this home and, and read through it and share with me what you think. But the last thing that I think is really important is that we have a, a South a approach to public education that I call One South Carolina. And what that means is that it shouldn't matter where a child happens to be born as to what their educational opportunities are. And it is right now in South Carolina true that if you happen to be born in a county that's very poor, your opportunities are going to be limited compared to what they are in other counties. And so a couple of ways to really make an impact on that is to increase the state's share of funding for public education so that we have equity. And then secondly... And that's, it, that's a very new concept. It's a very important concept yes. that we really need to... If we're going to have some, we talk about the problems, but people don't talk about what the solutions are very yes. often. So we're trying to put solutions out there that could really make a difference. And the other part to that that I thought about, and um, and I know really in here there's um, historically in this lower part of the state been a dichotomy, is that in the counties where people tend not to want to, let's put it this way, there's not as many um, uh, uh, amenities in some counties yes. and so it doesn't attract people to live there. Mm -hmm. And so we have a hard time getting really high quality teachers to go there. Um, those are also the counties where we tend to pay teachers the least. That's right. So not only is it hard to get people to live there, but then we don't reward them financially for going there. And so one of the things I want to see the state do is to say, hey, you know, high quality, great teachers like the ones around this table and elsewhere in the state, um, we want to reverse that. We want to make sure that if you will go teach in a county where we really, really need you, um, that we reward you for doing that. And that helps with that. Um, changing that um, problem where a child's opportunities are based on, on where they live. And the last thing I want to mention, and then I just want to listen and, and share and talk with you, is, um, is also something that I've really heard from teachers over the last couple of weeks as I've talked about these proposals. Um, and they, ho they honed in on this proposal that I have, so I want to share it with you. 
uh, and, and, they, and it came up in the context of the teacher evaluations that I'm sure you're all aware of. Um, and that is that teachers in this current administration and government have really felt excluded from the decisions that have been made. Um, and I had one teacher say, you know, can you imagine deciding how to evaluate doctors and not including doctors in that discussion? <laughs> um, I don't know what, how to evaluate a doctor, but for some reason we all think, or some people think, that they can decide what teachers should be doing without including teachers in that discussion. And so I want to create a um, teacher's council that would be a permanent entity that would involve teachers from around the state that could help advise the governor and other policymakers on what we should be doing to improve public education. Because at the end of the day, ladies, you guys are the ones who have the expertise to help us shape it. As much as I go into schools, and as much as Amy and I have our children in public schools, and I'm a graduate of public school, we all know that when you're not there for a while, oh, absolutely. You, don't know what, you don't know what's going on. You guys are there every day, and we appreciate you being there.